Zalea from ColoratedCinematics.com and today I will be showing you how to create this awesome neon trailer title. Alright, so that looks really cool. If you don't wish to follow this tutorial or you want to support our YouTube channel, you can always buy the template with the link in the description. So you can just change the text and you're done. And for those that do want to know how this is done, let's continue with the tutorial. So let's fire up After Effects and get started. Alright, here we are in Adobe After Effects and let's get started. I will create a new composition and I will rename this main comp like usual. Make it full HD 24 frames and 10 seconds long. I'll click OK. Then I will import one of my textures. And this is the texture that I will be using. I found this one on Google searching for scratched metal texture and I will import this in After Effects. So I'll drag this here into my composition and I will make this smaller like so. And there we have it. What I will do then is just click on that layer, go to Effect Color Correction Curves and bring down the curve so it's a little bit darker, so it has like a little bit more contrast and pop. And then I will go for Effect Color Correction and add a tritone to it to actually give it its own color. I will pick some kind of greenish kind of cyan colors, um, one in the highlights here. Uh, for this one we will take like a darker toned color, like so, and then for the darkest one uh, we'll go for blue and just a very blue saturated but very dark color like so and play around with these colors until you're satisfied so it's uh, for everyone it's it's different you can go and do some really cool stuff uh, using this technique actually to get some really interesting backgrounds okay click OK maybe this one is a little bit too saturated so I'll bring this down and maybe a little bit more to the blue side or actually I like this one and just make my shadows a little bit more poppy okay so it's playing around a little bit and once you're satisfied I think I'm going to stick to, to this here so this looks pretty cool for a background then I'll create a new solid layer and these are going to be my smoke uh, kind of layers I will click OK uh, well actually we only need one layer <laughs> and so go to effect noise and grain and we're going to add a fractal noise to it like usual again and then I will open up my transform settings and change the scale to 775 uh, for the brightness we can go minus 30 so we have a little bit more contrast in here complexity can, can change that to 13 so we have a little bit more information and apart from that I'm going to change the blending mode to a screen and press T on the keyboard and change my opacity to 10%. Hold Alt and click on the evolution here on the stopwatch for the evolution of the fractal noise and I will write time times 150 and that's going to animate my smoke a little bit. And then I will open up the transform right here. I'll click on offset turbulence and here we are going to enter an expression. For those that are not experienced in any kind of ex uh, expressions, uh, well just watch closely. It's not that difficult, um, but it might scare some people off. So open the brackets value and I will explain in a second what it actually does. Open the brackets again, enter zero, close the brackets, comma, value, open the brackets one, close the brackets and close the brackets again. So what we have now is actually exactly the same as we already had. So this expression is actually doing nothing. So um, we have the value for the X, which is just picking this value that we enter in here. So this is exactly the same. Zero just tells us that we are speaking of X and one is telling us that we're speaking of Y also with the same kind of value. What we want to do differently is actually behind the zero and closed bracket, so before the comma and after the closed bracket for the zero, we're going to add plus time times 50. And what that will do is animate our X over time, but it's going to leave our Y as it is. So that way you can just um, yeah, add this kind of expression to one particular animation. Um, so there we have it. 
So now we have like the smoke flying towards the right, which looks pretty cool. So what we can do now is uh, go to the scratch metal, copy the triton actually, and paste it to our smoke. And now we have a little bit more of a um, yeah similar toned smoke. You can press T on the keyboard and maybe go for 15, completely depends on you. So uh, I think this looks all right. And now what we can do is select both of these layers, go to the layer and pre-compose them. So background, okay. So now we can start with our text. Um, I will go for the text tool and just click right over here and I will enter subscribe. Which is what you should do if you enjoy this tutorial. So I'm going to make this a little bit bigger so, and then I will pick my selection tool, put it right here for now. Or actually we can go here in the tab and align, click on this button and this button. And that's going to center out your text, make it a little bit smaller and click them again. And there we go. Looks all right, we can, we can space them out a little bit. I'm using code bold, which you can download on thatfont.com. Um, I usually go there for my fonts. Uh, let's say 100 right here. Um, okay, so what I've done here is actually I switched the colors so they are only showing the outline of my, uh, of my text, like so. And then I will click on that text and also add a generate fill and go for a sign color. If you go for a sign, you're going to see right here that we have zero and 255 and 252 or whatever you will have. Just make sure that these last values are both 255, which is the max you can give in there. And then you have a perfect sign color. So um, that way you can click okay. And there we have it. What I'm also going to apply is create a new adjustment layer and we are going to affect some presets and apply a perfect glow, which is something that you can download on our website for free at the freebies page. And you can just apply this to your adjustment layer. Then you go back to your project settings, click over here and go for 32 bits per channel, click OK. And you're going to see that our colors are popping immediately. So uh, for the intensity, let's go for 0.07. It's a little bit softer and for the radius, something like 10. All right, so now we have a little bit of glow in our text. We can click on our text itself and go to layer, pre-compose it and pre-compose it as a title. Now, if we're going to jump into that title composition, we can click again on our text layer and now we can actually duplicate it and press T on the keyboard for the first one and actually change this one to one, uh, well, to something like 10 or 25, a lower value. So if you uncheck this one, we're going to have like a darker value um, of the same text below it. Now we're going to create a new solid layer. And again, we're going to rename this fractal noise and we're going to apply an effect noise and grain again, fractal noise. And now we're just going to hold alt and click on the evolution stopwatch and enter time times 100 or something like that. Nothing too fancy. We can go for the brightness or actually what we can do is go effects and priest well, about um, effect color correction tint and we're going to change our black to like a um, yeah a little bit brighter so we don't have exactly black because black means that it's not going to show whatever I'm trying to do right now so um, that was a little bit uh, difficult to understand because I didn't do what I wanted to do yet so um, right here click on make sure that your fractal noise is on top of the text layer with 100% opacity and toggle the switches until you see the track mat value right here or actually this bar and then just click over here and click on luma mat and now it actually uh, makes sense so the reason why I didn't make this black is because if we would make this black we would have parts not showing like so so this is pretty harsh and just making this a little bit brighter is going to give you different values but it's never going to give you a 100 percent um yeah transparency let's say so actually what you can do is maybe you don't actually need this one uh, we can actually <laughs> delete this part and maybe just play with with this part here and go for as dark as you want and now if you're going to script through it you're going to see that it's actually animating so now we have a little bit of motion in our text if you want it to go faster just press e twice on the keyboard and that's going to show your expression that you just typed you can change this to 200 it's going double as fast as it was so just playing around with that value makes things go faster or slower okay this looks pretty cool let's go to our main comp and there we have this looks pretty cool um, I'm also going to click on my background and actually add another curves to it color correction curves to make it even darker I think it's uh, not dark enough 
and you can of, of course add more colors to it if you want to but green was actually okay and uh, we're going to leave it as it is jump back into the title and now what we want to do is actually click on our text layer and we're actually going to duplicate it again but this time for another reason so go to the beginning of your timeline go one frame forward and just trim it completely to one frame zoom in a little bit so we have just one frame of this text and then of course we can select these two layers and just trim them uh, towards here so we we just have this frame to work with and what I want to do here is actually click on the text go to animation and apply an animate text enable per character 3d open up with the arrow toggle it out uh, toggle it open go to the text more options and right here we have anchor point grouping alignment uh, we want to actually bring this up this last one so we have these cross in the middle of our characters like so so just try to eye, uh, eyeball it a little bit this uh, this is going to be different for everyone depending on your font the size of your font etc so um, just try to uh, get them in the center as good as possible it doesn't matter that much uh, but yeah, okay, let's continue. We're going to click on animate and right here We're going to animate the position. We're also going to click and add again rotation And if we go into the range here, so we have animation and uh, animator 01 we have position and rotation we can actually go and modify these Randomly so if we go and open the range selector we can go into advanced and right here, if we are going to the position, and let's say we're going to move it towards the camera, we can go into the advanced options for the uh, animator. And right here, you see randomize order if you toggle this on. And you go to the beginning here for the end. You can actually um, play around with this. So you can also play with the offset a little bit, but that way you get a little bit of variation in there. So what we want to do is actually really bring this towards the camera. Maybe you want a few coming like so, and move it up a little bit like so. So try to give some ver uh, some variation to our text. I'm going to rotate it a little bit, not too much, of course. And again, for the rotation, they're all going the same way. So you can still go and play with the um, with the offset a little bit. You can also random seed here, so we have different options. Um, but I think my rot rotation is a little bit too much right here. Okay, so there we go. We have them close to the camera. That's what I wanted uh, and them to be pretty close. Then what we want to do is actually just go to the text, close it down and just duplicate it and drag this one one frame further away. And now what we want to do is just open it up again and go into the text and just go to the animator and play with the random seed a little bit. So range selector, advanced, random seed right here. So we have a different kind of uh, animation. Also you can play with the values. And one more, duplicate it, put it right here. And actually what we can do is just go one step back and now because this is still open, we can just change this one. Um, so we have just a little bit of variation in there. Make sure that the track mat is turned off um, because we actually did this with the original file. And now switch it up a little bit. Okay, and this one as well. So we don't need a track mat for these kind of texts. And now what you can do is just bring these two layers close by. So we have one frame like so, one frame like so, and then our original text. So now they're going to like slam in a little bit. Okay, so this is pretty cool. Let's go back to our main comp. It's going all really quickly, so that doesn't really matter. You're barely going to notice it actually. Alright, let's go to our project and import 
file. And I will actually use one of the film burns that you can buy on our website. Uh, a link will be in the description. You can also get a free pack, so uh, just some sample packs to test it out. Uh, so go to the freebies page for these, uh, and I'm going to import this one. I will drag this into my composition, and actually just drag until you see a frame that you actually like. So maybe this one, and go for mode screen. And now we have this kind of uh, nice line here. Actually, I'm going to use one of these. These is, and these are a little bit more, uh, a little bit more bright. Uh, so these are pretty cool. I'm actually going to zoom in a little bit so we can narrow it down frame by frame. Okay. Then I'm going one frame forward. You can do this with this uh, button or just with the page down button on your keyboard and go to edit split layer. This one is also cool. Uh, we can actually scale them down their 4K. So uh, now we have something like this. Looks pretty cool as well. Again, split the layer. I'm doing this with Control Shift D. One frame forward and split the layer again. This one is also pretty cool, actually. Okay. Split the layer, delete it, one frame forward, and delete this part. So now we have on every single uh, frame that we have of our text, we have this kind of flare that's going to add a little bit of popping effect to our text. I'm also going to jump into our background and just make our smoke a little bit brighter, something like 35, and go back. All right, so this is pretty cool. Um, I'm still going to do some kind of a zoom in with my camera so we have a little bit more um, kind of momentum into our shot. So what I will do is go to my background layer, toggle the switches right here and make my title and background a 3D layer. Go to the background, press P on the keyboard and change your Z position to 10,000. I'm going to scale it up until it actually fits my composition again, like so. Right click, new and add a new camera. Click OK. And actually, um, our background gets affected by it, so we can make it smaller again. Okay, so this is a cool frame that I actually wanted to end at. So what I will do is zoom out, go to like five seconds, press P on the keyboard for the camera and click on the stopwatch. Go over here to the beginning and zoom in a little bit. So now we have a nice zoom out, very subtle, um, but like this, that will look very cool. And now one last thing that I will do is just create a new adjustment layer and rename this to vignette and go for effect color correction curves, bring down the curves and go for an ellipse mask and double click on that ellipse and subtract it. Press F on the keyboard to feather it out. And there we go. So now we have a little bit more focus pull towards the center. As you can see, um, the edges are a little bit darker. So let's do a final preview. Um, I will go to my adjustment layer and for my um, kind of glow, I will change this to like 35. Let's see what that does. A little bit more glow. Uh, couldn't hurt nobody. Should make that a song. So this is pretty cool. And that's actually it. We'll go to the beginning and actually not zoom out that much. I think it's a little bit too much. All right, and that's it. So it looks pretty damn cool. If you enjoyed watching this tutorial, give this video a like and also subscribe to the channel for more. And also, if you want to know how to do that kind of uh, stroke effect on the text, that's something that I didn't cover in this tutorial. I will be doing a tutorial on that tomorrow. So, so definitely subscribe if you want to see that. And if you go to our channel and click on that alarm bell, you can actually get a notification if that one comes out. So uh, definitely go ahead and do that and then you will get every single update of new videos of mine. Alright, so that's it for this video and see you in the next one. Goodbye.